Gino and the Cats come out strong in the first. Gadouli hooking up with George Murray for a touchdown, capping a 62-yard drive, 7-0 Cats. But that was countered with this. Gadouli time, but maybe that's asking too much. Sean Lucas picks him, and Lucas has lots of room, 42 yards. Stage dive like Jerry Springer, 16-7 Tulane. Tulane quarterback J.P. Lozman putting on a show. He's got a wide open Tristan Smith. Where's the D? It's a ball in his pocket. Tulane with a 22-10 lead. More from Lozman this time. Finding Demarcus Davis from 13. Uh, D there, kind of. Gino had three picks, but connected on 20 of 33, including this beauty to John Olinger. Take a look at Olinger on the other end. Nice concentration. That set up Jonathan Ruffin from 18. It's good, but UC goes down 35-17. The Cats are 2-4, and four, headed to Southern Miss next week. And more bad news for UC. Gino injured the knee with a minute 30 left in the game. He was helped off the field into the locker room. After the game, Dan Horde talked with head trainer Bill Walker about Gino. Well, he took a blow in the knee and uh, went down the field. And, of course, we were concerned out there on the field. And when we got him inside here, you know, there is, um, there is a lot of pain in that joint right now. And quite frankly, we need to get him home and get a better evaluation on him, a more complete evaluation, and then we can give you more information. If Tulane has two losses in the league, we have now one. But it does put us in a tough position because, one, they just carted our quarterback out of here. And I've been trying to say forever, you know, you can't live and die by the pass offense. And if we lose Gino Caduli for some time, a game or some time, then... Uh, you're down to running the football, playing great defense, and playing sound kicking. And I haven't seen any of that on our football team. Do you feel like you took them lightly today? Uh, I think so. I think so. And this is college. You can't underestimate any team. And unfortunately, uh, fortunately for them, they were the best ball, ball, ball players today. So they got it done. We didn't. We need to get it done for the, from here on. I think a lot of guys didn't come ready to play today. When we did get in the rhythm, we killed ourselves by false starts and just foolish penalties. And we could never get ourselves into a rhythm. And when we finally did get into a rhythm, it was too late. We was already down by 20, 30 points. Up next for the two and four Bearcats, a trip to Southern Miss kickoff next Saturday is at 3 o'clock. The Buckeyes stepped out of Big Ten play today and welcomed San Jose State. Boy, should have stayed in sunny California. Yee. As usual, full house at the shoe. And as usual, freshman Maurice Claret was getting it done. This one yarder gives State a seven zip lead. Second quarter, Craig Krenzel going deep down the middle to Chris Vance. He's got it. It's a 28 yard score. It's a 38-yard score, I'm sorry. Buckeyes led 24-7 at the half. Mo Claret has said he doesn't like to fly. You wouldn't know it by this highlight. We have liftoff. Six points, his third score of the game. He also rushed for 130 yards. San Jose turned the ball over on four straight possessions. This one proved costly. Oh, yeah. Because on the very next play, Krenzel, he's got his critics, fewer now. Connecting with Michael Jenkins. 40-yard score. The Buckeyes remain undefeated, smoking the Spartans 50-7. to seven. We threw the ball well. We made some big plays in the passing game, which kind of loosened them up. Um, you know, Maurice um, you know, made some great plays, running the ball, found the holes. The linemen did a great job. Um, Lydell did the same, you know, finding the holes and getting the yards and protecting the football. And uh, any time that you could win the turnover margin and put up that many points, you know, you're going to win football games. That's one thing we've been focusing on is ripping the ball out, you know, or putting ourselves in position, to, you know, to make a big play or to make, a, you know, an interception to change the game. Everything looking good early today for Terry Hepner and his Miami Redhawks. Big Ben Rufflesberger going to Matt Brandt. 22 yards and the score. Look at Matt work. Miami up 21-7. Roethlisberger threw for 525 yards and four TDs. He was running to here a 10-yard touchdown run, 28-7 Hawks. But not time to dance yet. Northern Illinois scored 34 points in the first quarter. Josh Haldy, 40 yards to Dan Sheldon, 41-34 Northern Illinois. Comes down to this one. Northern's Michael Turner in from five. Northern takes Miami 48-41. This one hurt.
we know what we can do on offense. We have a lot of faith in our defense. You know, a couple big plays they have uh, just happens to turn the game just a little bit. Couple, uh, that's a couple, that's a, that's, a that's a big play, and it changes the momentum of the game. We have to come out and answer as an offense. We did it a couple times. Um, I don't think we did as good on offense as we should have. For us to be able to dominate the game like we did, and uh, for it to turn around and me not have the, the guys prepared to the point where we can uh, stem the tide, change the momentum back in our favor, um, and, and that's on me. The hefty lefty, Jared Lorenzen and his Wildcats take it on South Carolina's second quarter. J. Lo fires the strike to Tommy Cook for the 10-yard score. Cats on the board first with a seven-zip lead. On to the fourth, where the Gamecocks caught a major break. Quarterback Corey Jenkins fumbles at the goal line, but Watts Sanderson is there to scarf it up for the six. Game knotted at 10. Yeah, later it was Carolina's Ryan Brewer. And Lou liked what he was seeing from Ryan Brewer. Lugging the loaf, that's a six-yard touchdown. Lou Holtz and his boys take Kentucky 16-12. Kentucky falls to four and two.